Hello and welcome to the Geeks Review. I'm Royce. I'm Liz. Today we'll be reviewing The Christmas Chronicles, a Netflix holiday movie starring Kurt Russell as Santa, as well as its sequel that throws Goldie Horn into the mix as Mrs. Claus. Uh, Liz, I've asked you along as you're a bit of a fan of Goldie Horn and Kurt Russell. Oh, Kurt Russell's bae. <laughs> uh, we previously reviewed one of his earlier films, Foul Play, which he starred alongside Chevy Chase and Dudley Moore. And we've also discussed Kurt Russell on the show a few times, yeah, most notably in Escape from New York. And my all-time favourite movie is uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Yes, that's <laughs> one of my favourite John Carpenter films as well. There's the basic plot of the first film is these two siblings who lost their father the year before and with their mum working over Christmas Eve, they put their differences aside when they discover evidence of Santa's existence in an old home movie. Sure enough, they came face to bearded face with Santa and thanks to his time-travelling sleigh, are transported halfway across the country to find himself stranded in Chicago without the sleigh, the reindeer, or Santa's hat, and with it, his magic powers. The sequel is set a few years later and sees the sister with her soon-to-be stepbrother teleported to the North Pole by a former elf with a grudge, played by Julian Dennison of Hunt for the Wilder People fame. Liz, uh, what were your thoughts on this, this film series? Uh, my first thought was, I'm about 25 years too old to enjoy this. <laughs> it was... Uh, um, Definitely one of those movies that uh, I'd need to be under the age of 10 to really love. And um, I think it could be a real classic for those of those kids who are 10 years old who watch it and then grow up loving it. Because, you know, some of my... I mean, The Santa Claus, that's not a great movie, but <laughs> I saw it when I was, you know, just young enough to enjoy it. And now it's a classic. Um, yeah, it's one of those super cheesy movies that, adults put up with because they have children it's funny i don't i don't have kids but i was thinking like that if i was a parent i guess this would be okay if i was watching it it sounds like we're sort of pooing on the film a bit uh, um look it does have its merits yeah um once we get to the second one i'll go into a massive rant it, <laughs> there's something that's unforgivable but um some of the things like the the beginning of the the film it just pff, it, it escalates quite quickly. It's like um, family, happy family, all tragedy, and boom, felony. Yes. Yeah, that, that boy takes a dark path. He falls yeah, into, I like, was like, carjacking. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. It goes from, you know, family movie to Grand Theft Auto quite quickly. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, okay. And then for the sister to be like... Um, She's help, a snitch. Help me find proof of Santa and I won't tell mum that you're a felon. Yes. Uh. Yeah. When I started to watch it, I was kind of like, okay, this, there's a bit of personality to these kids, you know. They're pretty well acted at yeah. first. And at first. Yes, they, they get a bit uh, later on in the film. But I thought first up, this is a great first impression. Like, you know, they have character, they have personality. They're not just reading their lines. They're, yeah. They're interacting with each other naturally. And then Santa Claus shows up and that happens. But, yeah, it's a bit of a dodgy start. Yeah, I was just a bit... And I, I found that sort of... Um, the, the, the theme of committing felonies mm. in... in, in um, I suppose it's the whole... The, the path to hell is paved with good intentions. Like, although they're trying to do the right thing, they just they just keep really breaking the law to do so, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> Let's it's... let's steal this car. It's okay because with the person we're stealing it from stolen in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> we're just going to return it and take the long way round. Yeah. I think with a lot of old Christmas films is there's something really dodgy that happens in it. Like, I mean, you go to Jingle All the Way, which stars Rita Wilson and Arnold Schwarzenegger, and yeah. Phil Hartman's a bit of a sex pest. Yep. Yeah. And a bit, you know, he's trying to cuck out. He's trying to cuck out of Schwarzenegger when you think of it. That's a very bold move from Phil Hartman. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. in this, I guess the kids who watch this 10 years' time on Facebook or whatever, or the equivalent of Facebook, are going to be like, that kid was a felon yeah. in this film, this classic, which yeah. I used to watch when I was a kid. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's like <laughs> the like discussion I had with Matt about love actually and says I still love it I just uh, look past all the, <laughs> the horribly horribly sexist and mis misogynist and slightly creepy stalkery things about it because it's all romance yeah well yeah what else about this film uh, Christmas Chronicles we're discussing <laughs> <laughs> sorry um well, I never thought I'd be sexually attracted to Santa, but there you go. Yeah. Uh, like that bit, oh God, that hair, that bit, just 
That it, coat, the costumes, oh my god. The costume is fantastic. Oh, that it's like red leather with the rabbit fur. I'm just like, yes, yes, yeah. Santa, yes. It's a really clever way they did it, I think, mm. you know, because, I mean, it looks like he's actually been surviving in the wilderness, in the woods. I mean, he's not like rough and tumble. He sort of is, but he's not like, you know, pooing in, in, in a hole and burying it. He's like, you know, yeah. he's got a he's got a house. He's, he's, he's been he's, around. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's acclimatised to, you know, the situation he lives in. Like he's not frontier you, Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. He does actually acknowledge the whole, you know, Coca-Cola sort of thing with the yeah, fat, and, jolly Santa yeah. impression. You and how he's get. like, I don't ho-ho-ho. I did like the first one, I think, the most because it had those moments in it. And they're yeah. mostly around Kurt Russell himself rather than the kids. Yeah. And talking about, you know, tonal dissonance, I mean, you do have the moment where they all get split up. So it's almost like three completely different films. I mean, Santa's in a jail cell. <laughs> yeah. And he started a whole musical number. That, don't even get me started on the musical numbers. Well, cameo from um, Stephen Van Zant, who fans of The Sopranos might know yeah. as Silvio Dante. <laughs> Because he's a musician and, you know, he was in the series Lily Hammer. Um, so you're going to got that. Then you're going to got the girl in the North Pole or something, you know, with all these elves. And she's like, yeah. I'm a true don't believer. Even, don't even get me started on the elves. Okay, we'll get to the elves in a minute. <laughs> but then you're going to got the son who's, you know, roped doing? up in this crime story. Like he, uh, these thugs, yeah. like these quite vicious thugs kidnap him. <laughs> And it's really like, wow, this is quite dark. And guns. There were gun- guns in a Christmas movie. Yeah. Like, what? Like, the, poli- the police. I did appreciate that there were two uh, black policemen. I yes. That was, a, that was a nice change of pace. This is a few years old now. Don't just <laughs> well, Yeah. But it's yeah. just like, just, just, they're pulling guns they on, on great, kids. Actually. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole, you know, sort of E.T. Remember the, head of the guns and Spielberg yeah. in the 20th yep. anniversary. Photoshopped them out. Um, but yes, what happens with the the elves? Well, there's a merchandising ploy. For them. They're, they're like the minions of this movie. Oh. And I just found them, don't get me wrong, as a 10-year-old, I think they're, I'd think i think they were freaking adorable and awesome, but as a 35-year-old, I'm like, <laughs> go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I found them a bit unnerving, if mm. I'm honest. I just found them annoying. That, I that too. did like the fact that they had their own little language and Santa actually spoke it. That was an interesting thing because yeah. this and the second film is really keen to go like we've got our own law mm. for Santa Claus and the second one sort of goes into a whole bit of like, you know, let's see the elves making video games. <laughs> and that was a bit... I, I, did, I did like the ones playing like Dance Dance. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, oh, okay, they're cute. Okay, that was all right. They're cute. <laughs> all right. But there's something about them I found a bit weird. Like, I mean, you've kind of got fairy critters like, you know, you've got cats, which are cute. Mm. I like cats, you know. You've got your bears, your squirrels, your otters. It and sounds you... like you're reeling off a whole heap of gay subcategories of men. I am a bit. Yeah, I was thinking <laughs> that. Otters, bears, <laughs> wolves. Well, what about... Um, there's something quite primate like with the elves, and I, I'm not a fan of like yeah. monkeys and elves oh, and they, primates. I mean, people I like love them. monkeys. They kind of remind me of like little lemurs, but fat S- lemurs. Sort of, yeah. And they're weirdly cartoon styled compared mm. to everything else. Like they're sort of the Sonic. Though I do think when um, Bell Snickle turned back into the elf, he um, I, his performance was much more convincing as an animated elf than he has, <laughs> is as a person. I did not, like, I haven't seen him in anything else, I don't think. Really? Um, but I did not appreciate his performance. Yeah, because, I mean, he was in Hunt for the Wilder People, which was the big Taika Waititi yeah. movie a few years ago. It sort of put him on the map along with, you know, what we do in the shadows. And he's since been in Deadpool 2. As the kind of villain in oh, that. Oh, yep, yep, yep. And he was in like a Lynx commercial. <laughs> um, when it started, I'm like, that's oh, that's the, the kid from Hunts for the Wilder People. And yeah, they've gone and chucked him into a villainous role. That seems to be his big typecasting thing. And for me, it's, I don't know, it's not convincing. No. He's a villain. Like, I, I don't see it. No, he was a bit. Seeing him transform into the elf at the end, though, was also a little strange for me as well, because I was already <laughs> off put by him all. Yep. And it's sort of like, you know, oh, it's a thousand years ago and Santa Claus is doing this thing. And then there's this elf who's wearing like a backwards cap. <laughs> and Yeah. 
<laughs> he's got attitude. He dresses in black. Oh, he was a bratty child. He, well, he was kind of the equivalent of Satan. Satan, Lucifer was an angel who got pissed off at his dad. I've only just realised this. Is, like Santa Claus is God. Yeah. And he has all these elves. And he's like fallen and from his, grace. His, his like favourite elf is uh, Belschnickel. And then humans come along and dad's like, oh my God, there's better. And so Lucifer slash Belschnickel is like, yeah. <laughs> I'm a grumpy teenager, I'm going to rebel. Oh, that just oh, just came to me like Satan. Many oh. levels of... <laughs> <laughs> but I have to... Okay, here yes. here is my... Okay. The two sleighs. They got the two sleighs. This is in the, in the second one. Mm. And there are these weird creatures pulling Belsnickel's sleigh. And and Santa's like, what the hell are those? And he's like, the what, jackalotes? Yeah. A cross between jackals and coyotes. Um, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Did the design... Has the designer even seen a jackal or a coyote? <laughs> That you put those two together, and that's not what you get. It was that, a pug. It was that was a pug and a hyena, yeah. um, injected with growth hormone. Yeah. Um, no, uh, the three people, three, three, three people need to be fired. Um, <laughs> one, the person who designed that. <laughs> two, the person who looked at it and signed off on it and said yes. And three, every single person who saw the design and didn't say anything. Yes. It's one of those things where it's almost like the, the designers or the, the special effects people then rebelled against what had been filmed. Oh, my God. Like sometimes you've gone and got an actor who's interacting with a character who's not there. Yeah. And then it's like, just to mess with the actor, they'll go and put the character somewhere else <laughs> and they're like looking into dead air. And this was like, oh, yeah, it's jackals and coyotes. And it's like, it's clearly a pug. It's it's a pug and a hyena. It's yeah. a pugina. A p- great name, that Just, one. Just... Uh, oh. This is possibly one of the single worst pieces of movie design I've ever, ever seen. Like, I, I can't... I'm racking my brain and I can't even think of anything that's as bad as those <laughs> jackalodes. No. No. <laughs> Terrible. What if they were actually called, like... Paginas or something. Paginas, I could, I could do because they did look like a, a a pug with a hyena body, and yeah. um. Why couldn't they just, just like really you know big. call up Julian Dennison on like a Zoom call and go like, can you re-record this line and we'll just dub it over and you know cover your mouth when you say Pagina or something and we'll call like, it that instead. Like the Pizza Hut Taco Bell thing in um, Demolition Man. Oh, which was that? Oh, um. There's the whole thing that uh, Taco Bell was the only thing, the only restaurant that survived the franchise wars, and so every restaurant uh, That's in right. the future is Taco Bell. But I, I don't know why, but for some reason, the Australian release had it as Pizza Hut, and so they superimposed all the Pizza Hut and redubbed really Pizza Hut over it. Yeah. Although on one of the streaming services, it's either it's either Netflix or Stan. They've got the original with the Taco Bell, and on the other one, they've got the Pizza Hut dub. I think I recently watched it on Foxtel and I'm... Oh God, I can't remember. There's a lot to that film though. And I've seen it before, so it maybe just passed mm. me by. But yeah, that's interesting. Uh, well, because I grew up watching it, like hiring it on, on video. That's how old I am. And that was the original Taco Bell one. So yeah. all the ones that I rented as a kid was Taco Bell. So Taco Bell. And then for some reason... They changed it. I don't know why. Maybe it was something to do with licensing. Yeah. Um, if it's something about, you know, if it's something other than that, like, oh, Australians won't know what Taco Bell is. I mean, like, sure, maybe they don't, but you can take from the inference that it's, you know, it's a fast food we joint. We all grew up, like, a lot of Australians grew up on American stuff anyway. Yeah. And so we, we pick up things from references, like, yes, I've never been to Taco Bell, but I know what Taco Bell is. I know yeah. about the, what is it, the shaking chihuahua. That, that was, Wendy's um, just kind of ripped off. Yeah, but I remember actually, in the nineties oh, they had this like chihuahua with Parkinson's. <laughs> yeah, I remember that now. That was not in the nineties, but that was it. Must have been something they brought back. Um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, and then all of a sudden Wendy's has that because it's shaken dog. Huh? Yeah. On the topic though of like you know weird regional differences, I do remember there was quite a few kids' films that went and brought in like localized actors. Mm. Do you remember there was the Disney Chicken Little film? I remember it. I haven't seen it. Yeah. I do know that Zach Braff's in it. Right, gosh. It probably was, hey. I think he plays um, the voice of Chicken Little. 
Yeah, well, his father, they went, for some Australian releases, they went and dubbed him over with, I can't remember his name, but he's um, Con the Fruitier and, you know, <gasps> yeah, Har yeah, Harold yeah. Gribble yeah. from Round the Twist. And they, they had him do the voice. And as well in the English version of Cars, like Lightning McQueen's agent is played by Jeremy Piven from yeah. um, Entourage. Yeah. But in the UK one, he's played by Jeremy Clarkson from Top Gear. Oh. So... It's strange when they do little regional differences like that. It's, it's kind of like, why? Why? <laughs> do you think we're stupid? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I guess it's sort of a treat, but then I've like, I've never heard the one with Harold Gribble like on Chicken no, Little, no. and I sort of wanted to see that. I went into that going... Who, it's... Play, who played him originally? Do we know him? Hang no, on. look it up. I'm going to get on my phone. I'm going to bet that it's Bo Bridges, based off nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Just random, was it? So we're talking the dad of Chicken Little. Hmm. What's the dad's name? Oh, I don't know. But, is it Buck Cluck? Mm, not sure. Because Buck Cluck is Gary Marshall, who is, um, he plays Walter Harvey in A League of Their Own. He was um, also a director, wasn't he, Gary Marshall? Or is this someone else I'm thinking of? <laughs> he might be a director, I don't know. Uh, but you recognise him when you, when you see him. But yeah, he's Walter Harvey of Harvey Bars. Um, oh, he plays the head of the studio in Soap Dish. I don't know if this is the right character, but... We're, we're going on a, on a journey down the rabbit hole. We cleared that up. It is Gary Marshall voicing his father, and it was... Uh, well, see, I like, uh, um, I like that... Um, I like Gary Marshall's voice. It's very recognisable. It's the same in yeah. everything. But it's that uh, New York, Bronx, get me a coffee. It's like, <laughs> I like... It's, it's, it sounds expensive. I like two words. Peppy and cheap. Sorry, <laughs> that's um, from... Soap Dish, another amazing movie. I need to watch that one. Very, We've... very young um, Robert Downey Jr. Very oh. sexy Carrie Fisher. That's, I know that one, yes. Mm -hmm. I know the one now, yes. Hi, I'm Betsy Faye Sharon and I'm a bitch. <laughs> oh, Carrie Fisher. Anyway. And whoopee. We're here talking about <laughs> the Christmas Chronicles. Um, anything else you want to kind of say about that? Because... Look, it's oh, uh, look, look. It is if you're if you're a parent and you need a Christmas movie for your children that's not gonna want to make you perforate your own eardrums and gouge out your eyes. Do this one. Yeah. Because it is, it's a bit of fun, and the kids will like it because it's got music and cute little CGI elves, and the parents will like it because it's Goldie Hawn and. Kurt Russell. Like, oh, for sure, yes. Hollywood's power couple for the last 40 years. Yes. And it is it is a bit of fun. Oh, also, uh, in the second in the second one, I'm sitting there watching it when they're doing the music, uh, like the, the singing in the airport, because, you know, that happens. Yes. And they're, like, the, the, the lady at the counter hmm. who had to tell everyone that, like, um, their flights had been cancelled. I'm sitting there going, why do I know her? Why do I know her? Roger's wife out of Lethal Weapon. Oh, really? This is Murta. And I'm like, oh, yay. Is she a singer? Because I was thinking, like, she definitely seems like, you know, with that voice, it was like, oh, you know, she's a... Yeah, I think it's just she's an actress who, who can sing. Yeah, uh, yeah. A little side note, one actress who has possibly got one of the best voices I've ever heard, Sarah Ramirez from um, Grey's Anatomy. Because yeah. they, they did a musical episode and she opened her mouth and I'm like, holy, wow. where the heck did that come from? Yeah. Absolutely amazing. But um, there is one final thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to... Oh, auto-tune, oh, auto-tune. Sweet Jesus. Yes. Like, it, it, it did not even look like that was coming out of their mouth. They were moving their mouth. It was like a very bad drag queen uh, lip sync. And I wish they'd had it in German instead, because I prefer <laughs> I prefer that song in German, because you can't unless you're German, you don't actually know how stupid the lyrics are. <laughs> yeah, okay. This was okay. As I'm a jaded, you know, dude, <laughs> I'm not that jaded. But this was okay. I thought, you know, I I definitely preferred the first one because I think there was more Kurt Russell. And then while the second one has Goldie Horn, it's sort of like too much for the kids. Yeah. And. I did hate at the end of every, uh, at the end of both of it, it was always a, there was nothing magical. It was in you the whole time. <laughs> uh. 
Yeah. Well, maybe it was a freaking life lesson for one of the kids. Yeah, I was actually, I came away from the second one with like, okay, you know, this has got a message yeah. to it. You know, it's got a few messages like, you know, family and all that stuff. Yeah. And I found more and more like, you know, these messages sort of condescending. Yeah. And sort of like grating. But I'm kind of like, okay, I think, you know, just because a film has a meaning, has a message, has a moral, doesn't mean you need to take it. Or you can sort of pick and choose and like, you know, so long as it's like, do do crime. <laughs> I was going to say, the message from the first one was like, don't, don't steal cars. <laughs> or you'll have to spend a night with Santa Claus. <laughs> Although, if Santa Claus is, is Kurt Russell, I'm going to go steal a yeah. car right now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think as well, you know, you're discussing, like, you know, for a younger audience, how this might appear. Yeah. And it kind of has me thinking back to some of the Christmas films of old and, like, mm. thinking, if I didn't have the nostalgia, would this be as terrible <laughs> to me? As no, an adult. It, that, that's the thing, I think. If if we'd grown up with it, it wouldn't be a hot, steaming pile of garbage. Mm. But because we didn't grow up with it. Yes. And I think a lot of movies are like that. Like, we will always think they're great, even though you look at them through the eyes of an adult and you can recognise how terrible it is. But you just don't care. Mm. And I think this is, this is, this is going to be one of those movies. I think it's better than the steaming piles of garbage we grew up with. Yeah. Because we grew up with some corkers. Mm. Um, this is a step up. Definitely, yeah. yeah sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, I think, I mean, if you're a fan of Kurt Russell and Goldie Horn, definitely check it out. And there's enough of them in the film that, you know, if you're an adult and you're sitting with your kids, for you to enjoy that. Mm. Both of them. I could just watch them in anything, really. <laughs> Good performance. And they look, both of them looked like they were having fun. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing. In the music stuff, Kurt Russell was just living his best life. He was, yeah. Absolutely. Like, because I, you know, used to seeing him in serious roles, but he's always been, he's always had that underlying comedy in most of the serious stuff that Mm. he does. But this one is like, there is no serious, I'm here to have fun. And that was kind of refreshing. It's actually made me realise how versatile an actor he is. I mm. mean, to play Snake Plissken mm. and, you know, Big Trouble in Little China, two very different characters. And you got mm. Santa Claus <laughs> and then you got other films like, you know, Stargate mm. or yeah. anything else where he, he is quite versatile. Mm. And it really made me appreciate that as well. I He's a very more stuff. underrated actor. Definitely, yeah. Mm. He, yeah, does not get the accolades he deserves. He's very pretty. He is. Even, even now, yeah. Oh, well, especially now. now, actually, I would say. Oh, like, that, that look of Santa really does a lot for him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the beard and the hair. Like, who doesn't love long locks of silver hair? Just mm. seriously. <laughs> anyway, this was our review of The Christmas Chronicles 1 and 2, starring Goldie Horn and Kurt Russell. You can check it out on Netflix and um, something fun to watch over the Christmas break. Speaking of Christmas movies, we'll be back next week with an hour-long special with uh, Matt and Liz. You'll be joining us again, as well as Jake. And we'll be discussing some of our favourite Christmas movies, some of our least (laughs) favourite. Basically, Christmas movies, good, bad. Check it out, and we'll be on the same time next week. Anyway, I'm Royce. I'm Liz. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.